guys, it's the Tubathon day one. So yes, we're kicking off Booktubeathon day one. Booktubeathon runs July 30th through August 5th, and I will leave all the details to Booktubeathon, its channel, whatever, Instagram down below. For Booktubeathon, you try and complete seven different challenges over the course of the week, and then each day there are video and Instagram challenges. Might be doing some, not sure, we'll see how much time we have in between reading. Uh, my full TBR I will also link below. It's fairly ambitious, so I'm not sure if we'll get through it, but I wanted to try because it is my first book to be with on. But this week we are starting out with our first book, which was decided by a coin toss, <laughs> which by the way, Chapter Kate made a pretty funny compilation of booktubers failing miserably, including me, <laughs> at doing a coin toss. I'll put that down below for you guys to check out. But that book is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. I started it this morning. It's kind of actually afternoon of day one right now. And I've got to do a few errands and then I'm gonna have some lunch at a, I don't know, coffee shop, cafe, somewhere where I can get a bit more reading in. And then I've also decided that for one of my other books, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, I'm gonna be listening to some of it on audiobook because it was available at the library. I have an ebook copy, but then with the audio, then I can listen to it while I'm driving. Um, cooking, cleaning, whatever, doing life stuff so that I can get more book in and try and get them all completed. So yeah, I'm going to vlog a little bit of me out and about and then get to reading. Guess we'll see how this whole seven books in seven days goes. Let's have some fun with Booktubeathon. Day two. Okay, so I was bad and I did not end up updating last night, but I did finish my first book, woo! As I said before, I was reading Born by Jeff Vandermeer. It was good. If you've read any of stuff, you know it's kind of almost the fantasy side of sci-fi, if that makes any sense. It's very creepily whimsical, but it was actually quite a fun start and I had no idea where it's going, which I feel like that happens a lot with his books, but it's an enjoyable, I have no idea where I'm going ride. <laughs> so this morning, I'm going to start Every Heart of Doorway by Sean McGuire as my second book. And that book is also the hat challenge, so that's why I have that on. <laughs> we'll be starting that while I'm just hanging out at home. And it's on the shorter side, so it should be able to finish that by this afternoon. And then later I do need to do a few things and then I'm going to take my son to the park and maybe be on book three by then. I don't know. We'll see. Also not sure if I mentioned yesterday I got through about 20% of the way through A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue on audiobook just from driving yesterday. So book two with thumbs off to a pretty good start. But I will check in with you guys again later. back. I finished Every Harder Doorway and it was good. It was nice. I've been on a sci-fi kick lately so it was nice to read something more fantastical and more in the fantasy realm and it was just perfect for that. And it was while it was on the shorter side I am happy to know that there are several more books in the series right now and we'll get to see more of that whole world. But right now I am ready to take my son to the park and get some reading in. I think I'm going to start The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I've been looking forward to. I can't, What I'm trying to do basically is switch up my genres so I don't get too bored of anything. So I read a sci-fi, a fantasy, and now I'm reading, I don't know what you'd call it, like a historical fiction? Maybe a bit of a romance. It is Seven Husbands. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go do that now. So I showed you some of the footage from Reading at the Park while I had my son there, Evelyn Hugo. 
but then I did not update last night. <laughs> I was here in this chair and I finished it all and it was so good. Really, really, really good. I definitely think it is now on like my top favorites of all time list for a lot of reasons. I think it tackled a lot of important issues. Um, the bisexual representation was really amazing <laughs> for once and just interweaving all of the old Hollywood stuff, the glamour, but also the truth behind a lot of the facade that they created. But yeah, so I finished that and now I'm trying to decide what else to start. I'm still working on my audiobook. I'm a little further through it. I think I'm at like 30, 35% now, but I've got some things to do today. So I guess more audiobook in and then decide what else I want to start. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of audiobook done because I have to drive out of town and then back into town after the weekend. We're going to my in-laws. They're having like a family reunion pool party and we're staying with them for the weekend. And since I generally listen to things on like 1.5 speed, I get through things pretty quickly. So I'm going to finish that, I'm sure, on the way there. And then one of my final ones should probably be audio form as well so that I can get more in because I'm sure I'm not going to do a whole lot of reading on Saturday or much on Friday because we'll have to pack and then we'll leave that afternoon and get there and then we'll be with family and then we'll be there all Saturday with family and all Sunday so to bring my sister-in-law to the airport that evening. Oh, however, I am for my seventh book that I left unchosen. I think I'm going to go ahead and read Binti by her last name. I'm pretty certain it is pronounced Okorafor, but it's a sci-fi series. She writes her stories with African heritage and mythology mixed in, and I'm excited because I'm going to get to see her. She's coming as a big author event to a city not very far from me. So I'm hoping to try and read all of her work that I haven't yet before I go see her speak. Anywho, so I'm going to start Binti today, I think, um, and then see how tomorrow goes what I can get done for the rest of the weekend because I still have to do my book to movie and a whole other book. So book to -a -thon has been going well, but I guess we'll see how this weekend happens. Check in later. So it's Friday afternoon because apparently I cannot vlog at night. That is apparently my thing. But last night I did have a really big migraine, so I didn't end up reading like book book and during the day it was... I was just doing stuff. We were out and about and I did not get to reading, unfortunately. Which means I had quite a lot to get through in the next couple of days. But because I didn't read last night, but I was still awake, I just quietly listened to the audiobook of Gentleman's Guide of Vice and Verse 2. I got through quite a lot of it, so now I'm at like, I think like 85% or so, approximately. And I'm about to leave to go out of town. And I've got to drive the whole way there, so I will finish it on the way there. Which means I really need to pick out a... <laughs> Sorry, that's my son. Chattering. I need to pick out a second audiobook. And I also think I need to change my TBR. <laughs> because the two books I have left, Spinning Silver and My Cousin Rachel, I do want to read both of those, but I don't think sprinting through them and they're on the longer side in the next two days is going to happen. So I think changing one of them to another audiobook, I'll just kind of browse through my library's offerings, pick something out. And then I think I've got it on my, I, kind of, I can consider it to begin with, but I think I'm going to switch my booked movie to Paper Towns. It's a lot shorter. <laughs> so that'll be easier to get through. I definitely think I can do it between like maybe a little bit of like poolside reading if I can get to it. And then if nothing else, finish it Sunday when I get back. So, and then tonight I plan on finishing Binti because I just started that yesterday and didn't really re end up reading much at all. But I should be able to finish that tonight. Okay, I am off. Bye guys.
as per usual, it is now Sunday. I think my last update was Friday. Oops. But I was with family all weekend, so I didn't really feel like filming when I was actually hanging out and socializing, so. Hold on. Sorry about that. I am currently batch cooking a bunch of chicken breasts so I don't have to throughout the week and then a bunch of ground turkey. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier on myself. Anyway, so since the last update I did finish Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue on the drive there and then I went ahead and started another audiobook which I ended up picking The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. It's a novella um, about one of the side characters but with the rest of the drive there and then the drive back today I finished that because it wasn't super too long and that was great. So those are books five and six down. Oh and I read Binti on Friday night when after I got there. Because let's be honest, I needed to get all these in and I didn't have a lot more time. So basically the Slow Regard of Silent Things took the place of Spinning Silver, which was a great idea because while I am very excited to read that, a really long fantasy is probably not the thing to pick for book two. <laughs> and then on Saturday I read, did get to read some of Paper Towns by John Green, which is now my book to movie adaptation. And then as soon as I got home, I finished it up. And now that I am cooking and I'm just waiting for stuff to do, I'm going to start the Paper Towns movie. And as soon as I do that, I will be done with all of the challenges! Yay! So technically, I do have all of my reading done for book two on. I've just got to get the movie in. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's, what time is that? I don't know what time it is. Is that like 8.30? So I have plenty of time before midnight to get that finished. Yay! So I'm going to watch that. I'll tell you what I think compared to the book. At least a brief overview. I'll see you guys when I finish. Bye. Hey guys, I'm back and I'm going to do my final wrap up for book two was on because I did not update again, as always, after I watched Paper Towns last night. But I'm going to start off and I'm going to just go ahead and go through the list of challenges for book two was on and what I ended up doing for them. So for the first one, for that corn toss, I ended up reading Born by Jeff Vandermeer. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. If you've read anything by Vandermeer, um, his sci-fi is kind of on the unusual end of the spectrum, I would say. More of a fantasy take almost. It also tends to deal with environmental themes. But they're often described as kind of weird, but I like that and I think it's weird in a good way, in a more unique way. But I can see how it would not be for everyone. I ended up giving it only 4 out of 5 just because I felt like there could have been a bit more, especially in regards to the ending, as I felt like it didn't really explain exactly what went on. And I also would have loved to see more about how the world that this is set in got to the point that it did. For the second challenge, read a book about something that you want to do, I ended up reading The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. And I listened to that as an audiobook because the thing I wanted to do was like travel around Europe and this is about somebody who takes a grand tour. This one was really cute. The main character is bisexual and which is more unusual I'd say to see male bisexual characters so I appreciated that. It was just kind of like a fun adventurous historical fiction romp and there wasn't anything like super negative to it and while I understand that the main character in it is supposed to be slightly unlikable and that he grows over the course of the novel I think that's probably just some of his personality is what held me back from giving it like a full five stars because I put it four stars on Goodreads probably closer to like 3.5 but it's not that I didn't like it I did really enjoy it it's just there wasn't anything super stand out for me for challenge three read a book and watch the movie adaptation my original pick uh, my cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier I realized just was not gonna fit in my time span. I do want to watch and read that, but it's too long. Let's let's put it bluntly. <laughs> so I ended up switching it with Paper Towns, which is already a book I own. I just have not gotten to around to. Figured now, why not? Now's the time. There's a movie that came out not that long ago, or maybe it was a while ago, a year or two ago. Either way, so this one I believe I put as a four as star as well. But again, I think it's probably closer to 3.5. Maybe it's just because I'm a little bit older now, but the 
overall message while nice, I felt like, I don't know, it was mostly just like, hey, girls and women are actual real people too. And I mean, he meant all people, but they're not just like these people and the images we create about them. But I guess maybe as a female reader, it didn't feel like a crazy concept to me that, you know, girls are more than just like objects. <laughs> But I did appreciate that he was trying to, like, subvert some of the winning a girl genre as a prize. The movie was a really pretty faithful adaptation, which I liked, and even made some changes that I did enjoy, actually, that I kind of almost wish were in the novel. But it was good. It was fun. So that was another challenge down. Okay, and then challenge four was read a book with green on the cover. And for this, I did end up reading my original pick, which was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And oh my gosh, I love this book <laughs> so much. This one definitely got five out of five stars for me. I just, it's one of my new favorites, easily. It's hard to get into almost all the reasons I enjoyed it, but just like the emotional journey, the idea that there's different kinds of love and each of them are important to you and develop you as a person. And I just like that the character was so, in the end at least, unapologetic about who she was. There's even some, like, tear moments, which was uh, a lot for me, but it was good. Romance isn't normally what I'd pick up, but I just heard so many good things about it that I, that I had to try it, and I am so glad I did. So if you haven't read it, you should. <laughs> then number five was the read a book while wearing a hat the whole challenge. I'm not really a hat person, so I just picked a shorter book, honestly, <laughs> for this so that I could get through it. And I did Every Heart or Doorway by Shauna McGuire, which is more like novella length. And that was great. And I definitely want to read the other novellas in that series because they're all kind of like thinner, shorter books. And then because I changed one of my other books, this also ended up doubling for the Read a Book with a Beautiful Spine because it really does have a nice spine on it. And my original one that I chose for that, Spinning Silver by Nova Novik, which I'm so excited to start. I just knew I could not do this challenge, which I started. I had too much stuff going on. We were going to be out of town for a couple days. And a very large, thick fantasy book was just not going to happen. So to make up for those books, to complete the seventh challenge of read seven books, I ended up reading Binti, but it's a sci-fi short and it's got a couple books in the series. And I will absolutely be reading them now. It was amazing. Even as just like a short novella, it was so unique. And the fact that she writes these fiction and kind of fantasy elements from her African heritage and background and using their mythology systems and traditions makes just a whole excitingly different universe from what you see in a lot of standard sci-fi. Even her sci-fi elements were unique, which were, um, in this book, very math-based, but almost in like a spiritual way, which is really cool. So the second one, which I think is called Binti Home, and then the third one I think is Binti the Night Masquerade. I am going to be on those very soon. <laughs> and my seventh book, I ended up doing a, another audiobook, and I went with the Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss, because I really do like the name of the Wind series, and this is kind of like a small, uh, an additional novella about one of the side characters named Ari, and it's just kind of like a peek into her world. After I read it, I saw there was kind of a love it or hate it vibe with this book, and he even talks about that in like an end author's note, but it's definitely not like a traditional story, and that has like, I don't know, elements that most stories do. If you're like a big plot-based reader, you probably would not like this, because it's more just like a slow journey about her world and how this character functions and thinks and goes about her life because she's pretty unique and there's no real big like traditional conflict or even really a traditional ending so I could see why people don't like it but all of those I don't know inner beautiful things that she experiences and look into this character's thought in Rothfuss's really like lyrical I don't know some people would consider it I'm sure too purple prosy writing I liked so <laughs> take that as you will but it ended up getting four four? I feel like I should know, but four to five stars, I think. Oh, and Binti got five stars. But that means I did complete all the challenges. Um, even though I had to switch some stuff around, but I honestly, I kind of knew that would happen a little bit, which is why I originally left one whole slot open. But still got through everything. Happy about that. First book, Tubathon. Completed in the books. Worked out great. Excited to watch everybody else's 
vlogs and wrap-ups and see how everybody else did and what they chose to read. Let me know how you did at Booktubeathon if you participated. I hope you guys had a great reading week. If you'd like to follow along with more of my reading, you can always find me on Goodreads, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes, I have an Instagram now, right. <laughs> I've got a few things coming up planned. There should be more videos this week. I've been kind of bad about getting them up, but I have, <laughs> have them filmed. I just have to get them edited. But until then, I will see you guys soon. Bye.